I'm your host, Bill McAtee. This time out, the raw power of Monica Seltz. Standing on the court, surrounded by spectators, there is nowhere to hide any weakness in your game. In 1989, a young woman from Serbia named Monica Seles made her U.S. Open debut. And even though she was all of 15 years old, it was quickly obvious that the center of the action was where she belonged. Well, Monica Sellis was a, a phenom and a sensation when she arrived. Uh, she had a lot of things that were unusual. She was left-handed. She had the ball, two hands off both sides. She had the loudest grunt uh, in the history of women's tennis. And she was just ferocious off both sides. Took the ball early, hit the ball hard with angle. And, and always, from the moment she started on the tour, extremely brave and was never, never afraid of the big moment. What was that experience like for you the first time, you're 15 years old, that you stepped onto the stage at the, at the Open? There was no feeling like it, especially my fourth round match against Chris Evert, uh, because this was the second time I was playing Chrissy, a couple of months before um, I beat her at a tournament, but this was a totally different occasion. This was her last Grand Slam, and the build-up to that match was just, um, I was in above, way in above my head. Thank you. Chris Everett would beat young Monica 6-love, six 6-2 six in Chrissy's last victory at a major. Still, a changing of the guard was in the air. But if the future belonged to the young, lessons would have to be learned along the way. There was a moment when you guys were leaving the court after that match, when you started to wave to the crowd. Do you remember this? No. Wave to the crowd, and then you saw that they were reacting to Chris. And even at the age of 15, oh you you got it. Yeah, you pulled back. You went, okay, this is this is her moment. I, I just remember going out there on the court, and I think in the entire um, stadium, besides my family, not a single person was cheering for me. <laughs> and at that age, I was not used to that because usually they were cheering for me. I think Monica had a few important matches that we'll all remember. And the first one is 89, and I'll never forget Chris waving goodbye. And it's kind of appropriate that Monica was the last one because there's similar styles, and, and Monica became such a great champion. By the late summer of 1991, Monica Seles had pounded and grunted her way to three Grand Slam titles. But she had yet to taste victory before the raucous crowds at the U.S. Open. Those crowds would be rewarded for their patience as Monica would treat them to an epic semifinal match. In 1991, you played uh, a match that many consider one of the best matches in the history of the U.S. Open against Jennifer Capriati. I think that match was one of the hardest hitting matches that I ever played and it were like the first females that just went out there and hit the thing out of that ball. The match everyone remembers, myself included, was that semi against Jennifer Capriati. And it was everything you wanted to see in these two young players. It was a complete slugfest. Having been through uh, either playing or as commentators or as spectator, 30 U.S. Opens now, um, probably a match I remember as much as anything for the tension was the semifinals in 91. Two phenoms, Celis Capriati facing off. Probably the hardest hitting match I've ever seen.
They both had just ferocious ground strokes. They were really a lot of fun to watch. Of course, uh, they always had the grunt meter on Monica Seles. You know, she was so loud with every, every stroke she took. <laughs> Third set tiebreak at the U.S. Open, the final set tiebreak, has always been the tensest of games that there is. And that third set tiebreak was just through the roof. I remember watching and just my own nerves and anxiety was just palpable. I was down a few points in the tie break, and I know at least I went for my shots, and at this stage, they went in. There was so much build up to that match because neither one of us has won, won the US Open beforehand, so this, to me, I viewed a Grand Slam very differently. So I was like, Monica, this is it just go for your shots, and thankfully that day my shots landed in. <laughs> it I think Monica really did a lot to change women's tennis in the fact that it was the first time that anybody hit the ball hard off of both sides relentlessly. Every shot that she hit, she was trying to end the point. The other cool thing about that match is wherever I go, would that be in New York uh, during the US Open, people still remember it. So that's really very special, because at that stage, I was 17, I think Jennifer was 15. So we had no clue, at least I had no clue, the magnitude kind of, oh, people are going to remember this match 20 years from now. In 1991, after defeating Jennifer Capriati, the newest young gun on tour, in a semifinal match for the ages, Monica would have to face a living legend for her first U.S. Open championship. We get to the final, and you take on Martina Navratilova, 34 years old at that point, and really a sentimental favorite. She finally had won over the crowds in New York. Unfortunately for you, yes. it happened against you. Yeah, because I remember Martina telling me in the old days, whenever she would play Chris Everett, everybody was rooting for Chris Everett. Um, and here, I was playing Martina Navratilova, and again, not a single person was rooting for me besides my family. This was a really brilliant US Open. <laughs> in terms, I definitely wasn't a fan favorite. So I knew I had to, like, I'm not just playing an opponent, but I'm playing the cr entire crowd, too. Um, and against Martina, I just remember we had a very tough first set. And I could just feel it. If I could win that first set, the momentum would be shifting. And sure enough, uh, it was the first set was a tiebreaker. And after I won that, I broke her think in the second set right away and then I could just feel oh my gosh the momentum and I just got more comfortable until you win a grand slam for the first time at that venue you're doubting yourself can you do that can I not do that and suddenly for whatever reason after I won the first set and I got a breakup I just knew I'm gonna win this match and you know, obviously the, the tournament Her first U.S. Open title would be her fourth Grand Slam singles championship and really cement her position at the top of the world rankings.